So is there anywhere we can go? Okay, there's that that we can. Oh, and there's this that we can fuck around with. Let's play with this. Got to jolt this thing. Nice. All right. What? Where are we going? All the way back to the mantis. Like we still have work to do. You think Saw and the others will be okay? Always looking on the bright side, huh? Hey. After freeing the imprisoned Wookiees and taking the refinery from the Empire, Cal still had no information on Tarful's whereabouts. Luckily, Choisik, one of the Wookiees Cal helped liberate, had fought alongside Tarful in the past. He and Mari Kosan, a member of Saw's guerrilla fighters, agreed to find Tarful for Cal. However, just as he received his news, Seer discovered an Imperial transmission revealing the Empire was close to unearthing another two months FO. For everything. Ah. So, this is once again a mystery. How do we get over there? All right, there's another area that we can jack into right here. So let's do our best to clear up Kashyyyk before we move on. Uh, and we're going to need to go back to Zepho as well. Let's go, BD. Let's see. Yeah, there's still that door for us to jack into now that the facility has power, so let's go back there. And I think that is the only thing we have to check up on. How do I... how do I zoom? There we go. Yeah, so we just have that one door to go through. Should be quick. Ben says, here's a good question. If Moss Eisley was a real bar, would you visit it? Moss Eisley is the name of a town. But if you mean the cantina, yeah, I would visit. I, uh, in fact, I have been to the cantina, the cantina at Disneyland and Disney World many times. I would love to be there. Of course, it's not filled with criminals quite the same, but... Bruce says, whoa, whoa, I'm just talking about a cleaning service here. <laughs> Bask the house boy. I mean, speaking honestly, there probably are some criminals hanging around Disney's cantinas. I bet there's a lot of blue collar crime that goes down in Disneyland. For all the lawyers listening, um, that's a that's a joke. I'm not I'm not being serious. I'm not I'm not alleging that anyone is actually a criminal. I got like 14 parries in a row. No one can judge me for getting hit there. Alright, um, we need to look at the map. Yep. I'm injured! <laughs> Get kicked in the face, dude. 
<laughs> I don't know why that was so funny to me. That was just good. I just really enjoyed that. All right. Ben says, who's my least favorite and most favorite Jedi? Um, well, so just for context, I don't actually like the Jedi very much. Uh, I think they're mostly boring. My favorite Jedi is probably Rail Avaros, who is a character that shows up in one of the prequel novels. Uh, because he is a very literal interpretation of a Jedi. He is uh, one of Qui-Gon's best friends. He was another one of Dooku's apprentices. So he's very, very uh, non-traditional. Uh, for example, the Jedi Code forbids love. It does not forbid sex. So he is a very DTF Jedi, which I think is kind of fun. Uh, He's kind of a badass. Um, he's really cool. So yeah, I really like Rail Avaros because uh, he kind of warps the Jedi code into something interesting. But uh, other than that, I like Plo Koon a lot. If I had to pick like one of the Clone Wars characters, probably Plo Koon in terms of people who like were members of the Jedi Order. Um, my favorite Force user is Ahsoka Tano, but she is explicitly not a Jedi. Um, but yeah. Uh, my least favorite? I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just, I guess I'm not really keen on Anakin. Don't really care for Anakin. Anakin's got cool moments and he's important, but. But in terms of Force users, oh, you know what? I, I do have an answer for my least favorite Jedi. I think Kanan Jarrus is my least favorite Jedi. He's the, the Jedi from um, from Rebels. Uh, he's not a bad character. I think he's totally cool and, and fine. I just, I don't care for him in general. Like, I, th I think that he's just kind of <laughs> lame, to be honest. <laughs> In terms of Imperial characters, um, Grand Admiral Thrawn is my favorite, probably. He's really sick. Um, I like Moff Gideon a lot from The Mandalorian. Um, yeah, probably those two are the two that I, that I like a lot. But everyone likes Thrawn and everyone likes Moff Gideon, so it's not really, <laughs> not really that, uh, intriguing of an answer to give like I wish I had like a hutter take about who my my favorite uh, Jedi and Imperial characters were but I kind of like them all um, for the most part I, I find characters here, here's I guess a hot take is I don't actually find characters like Tarkin very interesting um, because we're often told how cool they are and like even in their novel we're told like Tarkin won the love of his people but they never really show us <laughs> them doing that they we just are shown them being really conniving so even though we see a lot of you know we're, we're told a lot of that stuff and we get to see them being conniving and evil and stuff and that's cool looking i don't really care much for them as characters um i really like the villain the two villains in andor um i can't remember their names right now but they're great like, they're a great takedown of, like, fascist, like, cops. <laughs> really excellent characters in that show. Uh, I really like Krennic from Rogue One. He's, like, the one thing from that movie that I really like. Kind of not a fan of anything else in that movie, but Krennic is, is very cool. That was a very risky platforming segment. Whoa. Oh. All flame bits don't want to die here. Kettle says Deidre Miro. Yeah, that's her name, the, the lady from Andor, right? I liked her a lot. I thought she was really compelling. Oh, 
Oh, whoa. But yeah, in terms of Jedi and force sensitive people, you know, I like I like most of the classics, you know. I love Obi-Wan, I love Luke. And then you gotta you just gotta tip your hat to the fact that Ahsoka is just the coolest force user in all of Star Wars. It's like it's honestly it would be really egregious if she wasn't so cool because she's so clearly the writer, like writing team's favorite character. She is Dave Filoni's OC uh, to the point that like she she truly is just the favorite of the show in a way that uh, is just very much <laughs> in her favor. But uh, I, I need to go back. I went the wrong way. Uh, but overall. She's still so cool that it doesn't matter. Ahsoka makes like a very compelling argument for like why rule of cool can work. <laughs> Just straight up the best one of the best if not the best Star Wars character especially in terms of writing but that that also is just it benefits from uh, the fact that she has had more time to develop than any other Star Wars character like pretty much period in terms of screen time so overall she just she makes it out as one of the best uh, characters in the entire canon just by default And of course, I love Cal Kestis. I think he's great. Uh, without giving spoilers about the nature of the character itself, I also really like the second sister in this game. I think she's very cool and very compelling. I'm glad we could help the Wookiees. Free and the oppressed, that's where the passion to keep fighting comes from. Every death, every dead end creates a fighter who isn't afraid to lose. Enough of them, and we'll take the day. We did it. By the skin of our teeth. It'll be harder without your help. I know. But I can't abandon my mission. I understand. I got intel that may help you. A few rotations ago, my people searched an abandoned Wookiee village nearby. No sign of Toffle, but we did find out the safest route to the Shadowlands is through this refinery. I built an escape plan if this didn't work out. You'll catch on fast. When you're ready to find Toffle, that's the way to go. You've been fighting for so long. Have you learned anything from war? Nothing unites people like tragedy. Everything the Empire takes from us only makes us stronger. Each injustice spurs others to join our cause. If we stand together, we can win. Just like today. Thank you. For the cause. All right. Now we can head back to the Mantis, because I don't think there's anything else we can do here. Is that the way we want to go? Or can we just go through here? We can go right through here. Excellent. Oh, how evocative. Let's talk to Seer and uh, Dries, huh? Hey, Seer. Or Grease. Cal, good to see you back in one piece. Mari Kosan contacted us. We know you couldn't find Tarful. I love risking our lives for nothing. It's fantastic. It wasn't for nothing. Mari and Troisik will come through. I like your optimism. We could all use a little of that now and then. Hey, I'm a positive guy, too. I'm positive <laughs> that if I die, I'll be very upset. You did good, Cal. <laughs> We might not have found Tarful yet, but you saved lives today. Don't forget that. Thanks. BD-1, keep an eye on Cal for us. Just let me know when you want to go. All right, what is our objective currently? Just use the holotable on the Mantis to check out Zepho. 
Well, we do need to go back to Zepho anyway. Anywhere except Daphne. Hate that place. <laughs> it's so dumb, but it's so funny. All right, I think we need a few things to go back to Bogano. But if we go back to Zepho, we can uh, explore the Venator wreck. Back to Zepho, huh? The Empire okay. might have found a Zepho tomb. We can't waste any time. Korea says, I'm sure my gambling debts with the Haxian brood won't won't cause a problem. Don't know about that, Grease. So, you know, get out there and get me some seeds. It's very clear that he uh he is in league with some unfortunately unsavory characters that might be taking advantage of him. Let's look at uh the different materials we got. So currently we're using the jar to ball switch. What did we get? Magus, Valor, and Wisdom. We already had Umbaran campaign. Okay, so we didn't get any new switches. Magus, Duty and Resolve, Elemental Nature. Okay, so we have two of those. Valor and Wisdom, Passion and Strength. Oh, that's the Sith. That's a Sith uh, sleeve. Where's Matt? Dunium is like kind of green. Matt is just black. That's kind of cool. Dura Steel, classic lightsaber color. Valor and Wisdom, I like. Passion and Strength. Ooh, I like that emitter. I like that a lot. Let's just change this to something. There we go. Look at that. That's a that's a handsome lightsaber. Do we want to change the colors at all? Dunium. Let's do it. That's a nice lightsaber. <laughs> All right, let's go uh, sit down in our seat and go straight to Zepho. Kettle says, is Beskar very dense? Like you could sleeve a saber with it. You could sleeve a saber with it. The, uh, the dark saber is made with Beskar, I believe. Um, however, it is very heavy. Ben says, uh, I like that they included the infamous Stormtrooper cliche of them having very bad aim. Yeah, it's excellent. I like that that's been, like, added to the lore as, like, a thing. It's, like, in the new series, they've talked about how, like, Stormtroopers are underfed and, like, very taken advantage of. These ancient tombs didn't survive all this time because they were easy to find. It's a challenge I'm willing to take. I can see that. I'm glad you believe in what we're trying to accomplish. I always have. Ever since I was a youngling, I trusted in the Force. Those names on the list, they're a test. And I believe I will succeed. I like your confidence. A journey like this one can challenge you in ways you've never been before. I understand. I think I'm ready. We've got your back, Cal. The homeworld of the Zepho. Cordova must have spent a lot of time here. Cordova spent his life studying the history of the galaxy in many different places. Drag me along on a few expeditions. It was educational. He really believed in the past? He believed in the future. But you can't have a future without the past. You think Grease is putting bets on if we succeed or not? 
Pascal, I take responsibility for him. You have nothing to worry about. If you say so. When I found Grease, he was in a lot of debt with the Brood. I paid it off. All of it. At least I thought so. We all have our problems. Yes, I suppose we do. We still have a lot of work to do, Cap. Yeah, you and me, we're unstoppable together. Don't you think, kid, huh? The man is in greeds, every time perfect landing. <laughs> you could say that. Ever piloted a ship before? No, mostly just scrapper transports in Braca. Oh, kid, you gotta get in the cockpit sometime. Feel the controls in your hands and the galaxy in your grasp. Oh, it's unbelievable. Sounds good. Let me know when. Huh? No, not mine. Not the man is. No way. I'm just saying you should try it sometime. But with someone else's ship. <laughs> What's up, Grease? Remember that scout walker you took down? The ATST? Yeah. You got up close and personal, right? What are you getting at, Grease? How's about you liberate one of those things from the Empire and I take it for a spin? Oh. You gonna help me out next time we're in a fight? What? No. No way. It's always fighting with you. Yeah, forget I said anything. <laughs> so I'm worrying you? Nah. There's a lot of things to bother me. The Empire, deadly creatures, poorly cooked burrow fish. But when I'm in my ship, it's all breezy greasy. Good to know. We've got a lot more flying ahead of us. Right. No need to keep reminding me, though. If you're not ready to leave... <laughs> so Grease, uh... Grease is kind of anxious about something got the boba fett colors i have to i have to pay homage uh, let's see let's change our colors a little bit i want something warm for the boy put on commando Ben says, I'm having flashbacks to that Star Wars episode of Family Guy. Unfortunately, that predates my awareness of Star Wars, so I, uh, I'm not super familiar with it. I don't remember much about it. I think I probably watched it once or twice, but I just wasn't into Star Wars at the time, so none of the material s sticks out to me in my memory. As for whether or not I like Outlast, uh, I'm not really that big of a fan. Really I've played the first one, but... Are you in Greece safe? Technically, I, I played it when it... I worry about keeping us off their radar. We'll be fine. I played it the when it first came out, um, and then the second wasn't that interesting, so I didn't play it. Never. Mind. Basque says, I'm luring in my non-furry friends, Toaster. Oh, are you getting people to watch the stream? Hello, Basque's friends. Welcome. Unless you mean that you're just luring in, <laughs> you're, you're converting your friends into being furries, by which case, good for you. We're, we're converting more. <laughs> Oop. There we go. Excellent. All right, got that done. In terms of Boba and Django, uh, I'm not super in love with Boba as a character. I kind of feel whatever about him, but he is the first uh, first Mandalorian foundling we see in the canon, so I gotta pay respect. Gotta pay respect to my culture. All right. Kettle says, some of my friends have watched the stream with me and I have never brought up how I know Toaster. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm ruining your cred with all your friends. Internet streaming furry is just, uh, just gonna make you all into social pariahs. Ah! 
PD, stim. Okay, there we go. I am thankful for the fact that you all watch the streams with your friends. It helps the channel immensely. It makes me very happy. Okay, a very happy little raccoon. Now... Ugh. What else would make me a happy raccoon is if this guy didn't fire a rocket launcher at me when I'm trying to run. Uh, what's my goal here? That's what I don't remember. Okay, I, I did need to, I need to go to the Venator, so that's not a surprise to me. That's where I was going. Here we go. Okay, let's look. How do I get over to the Venator crash site? I have to go up to here. So that requires me to go straight through. Okay. Oh, fuck. I <laughs> In my head, there was a platform underneath me. I was locked on. I was not locked on. I blocked behind me. All right, so we just have to move forward over to the Venator. There is another, there's another path to it though, isn't there? I'm not crazy about that. Where is it? We still have to go this way anyway. Yeah. So if I turn around... <laughs> Alright, here we go. I just need to remember to uh, charge force push as I'm walking through this door, and then I'll send a bunch of them flying. Now we go down that way and then move straight. Nice. Okay. Oh, fuck. I. Oh, thank God I made it. I thought I jumped too early. BD, stim here. kind of crazy how uh, how weak the saber staff is. I mean, I get it. All allied units down. Time to end this. I think this is where I want to go. Because there's also that area that had the power turned off that we couldn't get through, and I think that's through here. All right. Uh, yes, it is. OK, I know where we are.
<laughs> All right, uh, where do we go? I guess I can go up from here. It feels good to be powerful. Let's see if we can slice this, turn off this barrier. Can't go through there. I thought there was like a an energy, not an energy, a uh, conduit or something over here that I could play with. Oh. slice it from in here. No, I have to slice it from the other side. Can't do anything about that, and we can't do anything about the other little pull, uh, force pull bridge, so we'll just have to go through where we went. But ask what I think about the Demon Souls remake. Um, overall, uh, I haven't played it, so I can't talk about the game feel, but I've heard it plays exactly the same. Um, is... Uh, you know, I'm sure that's fine. Um, there are a few things about the art direction that I don't like. I think it's weird that the Boletarian Palace is overgrown when people, like, literally live and work there <laughs> every day in that canon, but overall I think it's fine. Uh, I have a pretty high opinion of, uh, that... Oh, I don't wanna... Wait, do I wanna go over here? No, I don't. This just leads me... out and down. Um... What was I saying? Uh, the Demon Souls remake is fine, so uh, it seems cool. I like Blue Point. That's the name. <laughs> that's what I was trying to say. Uh, I think that the remasters that they've made in the past have all been pretty respectful and good, so good for them. Um, ben says, "Aren't twin sabers not prohibited in the Jedi Code? Um, saber staffs are not. Prim they're not uh, prohibited. Uh, Jedi Temple guards use them, and they." have their own usage. Um, twin sabers, as in like dual wielding sabers, are a saber form that is taught uh, to the Jedi. Uh, it's called Jar Kai. And uh, that is totally, totally fine. So, uh, generally the Jedi Code doesn't prohibit the use of any any sort of weaponry. They're, they're martially trained. Um, pretty consistently so they get access to pretty much anything they need oh I see where I was supposed to go ah! there we go uh, here's where I wanted to go right no it was the other way um, but yeah the the Jedi uh, train people in all sorts of weapon weapon skills Oh, shit. Oops. Guys are tough. Yeah. Little help, BD. Mild threat. Oof. Uh, 
Ben says, I was thinking about saber colors. Red is not allowed, Inside isn't it? Because it's associated with the no. Sith. And the Empire has been stepping up security. Keep your focus. Watch out um, for The thing okay. with red sabers we'll is that red isn't a natural kyber color. Um, it's not that they're prohibited. It's that the way that you turn a saber red is by, uh, for lack of a better word, poisoning the force that you are using um, and bending the kyber crystal into like the shape of your will, basically. So a uh, saber being red is a side effect. It is not an actual saber color. Um, saber colors are determined by the kyber crystal in the saber. There is no actual meaning to the colors. It's just a thing. It's just a thing that happens, basically, um, as a result of the kyber that you just put in your lightsaber. Um, so it's just like a personal thing that the Jedi do. Um, the Kyber speaks to them through the Force, and so it chooses them. So you don't really have a choice of what kind of color crystal you have, basically. But um, for the most part... Dang, I missed a radio call or something over here? That was so weird. Um, but red, red is what happens when a Kyber crystal is bled, basically. So it's a process that the Sith do to... Uh, force their lightsaber to work for them, essentially. Uh, basically, you can think of it as a lightsaber that is corrupted by the dark side of the force. Uh, I'm bummed I missed that radio call. I don't know what was in it. Um, the rarest saber color is white. Um, and the reason for that is a white saber is what is left over after a force user uses the light side of the force to purify a kyber crystal that has been bled. And we only know one person in canon with a light, uh, a white lightsaber, as far as I know, and that's Ahsoka Tano. I think there might be one in the High Republic, which is a series that takes place before the prequels. Um, but I, I'm not 100% sure about that. I, I'm, I haven't read those books, so I'm not familiar. The other uh, rare colors of Saber, uh, yellow is very rare. Um, we only know a couple characters that have had yellow Sabers, uh, one of them being Rey, obviously from the sequels, but also uh, prior to that, the only other characters that we see with yellow Sabers are uh, Asajj Ventress, and um, after she turns to the light side of the Force, and um, the Jedi Temple Guards have yellow saber staffs. But the thing with... Um, the thing with Asajj Ventress is that after she, she turns from the dark side of the Force to the light side, she gets rid of the sabers that she uh, constructed under Dooku and basically bought lightsabers uh, from someone who killed the Jedi. So she's just using someone else's yellow sabers uh, in, during the events of Dark Disciple. I think we're getting close. I noticed it earlier, this feeling in the pit of my stomach. At first I thought it was Grease's cooking. <laughs> now it's getting even stronger. I think the closer we are, the worse I feel can't mean anything good. Ben says, I googled it. Some white sabers are used by Imperial Knights and two others have white. Uh, Jura Mali and Orta Jereni. These might be Legends characters, so they might not be canon anymore. Um, 
I believe those that lore shows up in the old books before everything was like rewritten and and drained in. Um, because in the past, saber colors and things like that all had like really different meaning from the way that they do now. Um, after the story group came together and they decided what was what was canon and what wasn't and how they were going to move forward. Um, but if they are canon, then that's cool. Those are characters I was not familiar with. Okay. Ah, I see. Okay. So we're manipulating these so that we can move back and forth between them. Stagger your attacks, it's me. Fight, my children. Large damage initiated. Ah. Jorah Mali was a Togruta Jedi Master during the High Republic. That's why I'm not familiar with them. So yeah, that makes sense. The High Republic series is currently ongoing. They're kind of... Um, they're basically working to make that the new sort of open canon era for Star Wars. This motor should do the trick. How does it feel? Nice. Now we can go back to Kashyyyk and get that one thing that we were missing. Raf says, have you read any of the comics? I have read many of the comics. Not the High Republic ones, but pretty much anything that was canon up to probably, uh, what was it? War of the Battle uh, of the Bounty Hunters was probably the last, uh, the last one that I read. So... Anything up to that point, I read. BD, think you can charge this? Follow me down here. Okay, so uh, Orda Jereni and Jora Mali are both High Republic characters, so that makes sense. That's that's why I don't know them. Um, as far as the Imperial Guard, though, I I'm not 100% sure what that is involved in, but it, it's totally possible that I'm forgetting. I mean, reminder: I like Star Wars a lot, and I've read a lot of Star Wars, but it is a lot of information to keep keep steady. Guardians of the Tomb, in their search for Zepho artifacts, these stormtroopers suffered an unexpected and horrific encounter with a Tomb Guardian. There's a Tomb Guardian here? Why is there a Tomb... Oh, he's dead. Okay, so I don't need to worry too much. Shortcut unlocked. I've been meaning to get into the High Republic stuff. Um, it's very interesting as seeming. It's just, it's also... I don't know how to describe it. It's a little YA flavored. <laughs>
not that you know other Star Wars isn't YA flavored, but I don't know. There's just there's something about the High Republic that hasn't captured me yet. I'm less the again. The tools in a hurry. They were anxious to locate relics, but also careless of the history buried here. Again, the thing with Star Wars for me is that I don't actually like the Jedi very much. Like, as as a concept, I'm very genuinely disinterested in uh, force users that fight with la laser swords. <laughs> like, I just I don't like care about that very much. As much as I like Cal and you know the the force users that I've talked about, they're not the reason why I'm into Star Wars. Um, I just nice. I'm glad I got that. Um, you know, I like the I like the Mandalorians. I like the bounty hunters. That's the stuff I'm into. Oh, we're unlocking more more lore about Officer Crane. How are we gonna get up here? I'm trying to see what we're what we're up against. Oh, I have to climb. That's why. I didn't realize that's what that was. There we go. They're really pushing the High Republic because people really like the stories of the Jedi Order and like in the height of their prime in the Republic. But nah, man. I want I want my space dwarves. I want my Mandalorian coverts taking out people in in dusty old towns. That's what I love. I want the space western and like weird west of Star Wars. Like that's my jam. Give me the cowboys. Okay, I can't go this way because uh, I need force pull. Let's rest. <laughs> 